I'm Janelle Zara from Art Info. And I'm Barry Bergdahl, the Philip Johnson Chief Curator of Architecture and Design at the Museum of Modern Art. And we are at Henri Le Bruce, a structure brought to light. American architects in the late 19th and early 20th century overwhelmingly looked to Paris for examples of what a, a civic sphere would look like. So La Bouste was part of that. Uh, and so in a certain way, he becomes part of the DNA of American architecture around 1900. But you would be hard put to find a literal La Boustian building. So in the exhibition, we deal with both literal followers of La Bouste and more extensive, extended ones. So these tables uh, were actually commissioned for the exhibition. I thought it would be incredibly interesting to shock visitors into looking at drawings hung not on the wall as they're used to seeing them, but displayed on tables. And they are uh, inspired by the tables, very abstract in form, that La Brousse designed for the Bibliothèque Saint Geneviève, the first of his two libraries. He wanted to create a library that would promote a spirit of contemplation that would, the building itself would be conducive to study. So these vaults that are glossy white are actually light reflectors. So they're taking all of the light that's coming in 360 degrees around the building and intensifying it in order to make it easier uh, for you to read below. Can we talk about Labrus's influences in his own life? Mm -hmm. What informed his architecture? One, he was one of the first architects in a period when architects learned to look at the history of architecture in order to come up with solutions for current society trained with the notion that one could find an ideal in the past. Around the 1820s, architects begin, and artists, to reject this notion of the fact that there was an ideal in the past, and they become interested in the fact that history is actually a record of a process of change. It's in 1828 when La Brouste is making his transition from student to practicing architect that the term avant-garde is framed for the first time as an artistic position. So when visitors come, they'll obviously be drawn to this model. Can you tell us about it? We were drawn to it too. We discovered it during the course of the research for this uh, exhibition. It's by an architect who studied with Henri Labrousse named Anatole de Baudot, and he was interested in how reinforced concrete could allow for the opening up of absolutely enormous spaces. All of the structure is kept at the very edge of the space and the, this entire central area is completely free of structure. It represents what we're trying to show in the entire sec final section of the exhibition, the fact that influence can lead to innovation. In light of the current controversy with the New York Public Library and Norman Foster's revision of it, there have been a lot of comparisons to what the New York Public Library can learn from La Brust. So this is a very, very dramatic intervention into one of the most important uh, buildings in the city, and I think a lot of people would like to see it slowed down and studied more, all the more because the Bibliothèque Nationale in, in Paris has gone through a radical transformation. Uh, in the last 20 years and has dealt with many of the same issues. So I do think there are things to be learned there. This exhibition, for better or worse, coincides with what is becoming now overtly the question of what will be the fate of the public building in a public space in the 21st century. Mm -hmm.